Hey everyone, Sean Watasa here back with another tutorial video and in today's video, we're going to be building a scalable Web3 application. And what I mean by scalable is we are going to be using ThirdWeb's engine to create an application and showcase how engine can be used to create these scalable apps. We'll showcase this by building a simple game and using engine to mint the user some tokens or points every time they score a point or win the game. And this will showcase how to create a scalable web3 application because we can continue playing the game with no interruptions and we'll handle all of the on-chain transactions for us behind the scene this way we can provide a good user experience to the user actually playing our game so an overview of what we're going to be doing we're going to first take a look at the demo of what we're going to be building and showcase how we can utilize engine to create a scalable web3 app then we'll jump onto third web we'll deploy ourselves a token contract which we'll use as a point system or token system to reward our player for when they score points or win our game. Then we'll jump into our code editor, build out our game and implement ThirdWeb's engine into our project so that it can take care of, again, all those on-chain transactions. So with that being said, let's jump on the computer. Let's take a look at what we're going to be building today. Right here on my computer, I have two screens open. I have my engine dashboard open. That way we can look at the transactions that are coming through. And on the right here, I have my game. So our game is really simple we're going to connect our wallet we'll just connect with a metamask wallet here and you can see here it is a simple game of rock paper scissors we have our balance here or we can even change this to score and what this is is uh, our erc20 token that we're going to claim every time a user wins a round of rock, paper, scissors. So a user here can select their choices. So if we select rock, you can see we won. And if we do win, you can see here that triggers engine to claim us one token. So we can see the transaction and everything going on here, but we can continue playing our game. So I got a tie, a tie. And every time we win, engine is going to claim us a token so the great thing about this again is user experience right now is uninterrupted i can play this game as i want to and every time i win it's going to send over a transaction and it is going to be mined and queued up by engine here all of this is happening behind the scenes with engine and over here you can see that our token balance if we give it a moment will be updated but we can continue playing our game we can have multiple people playing this game and again every time we win we're sending that transaction on over to engine and it is going to claim us a token so right over here you can see we sent a bunch more tokens here again and there you go you can see that our token balance is now 30 and again, this is just demonstrating how we can use Engine to create scalable Web3 applications. So with that being said, let's deploy ourselves a token contract we can use for our project here. And let's take a look on how we can set up a simple rock, paper, scissors game like this and implement Engine into it. So let's head on over. Let's open up a new tab and go to thirdweb.com. I'm going to head on over to our dashboard. You can connect your wallet in the top right if you haven't done so already. And once you're connected, we're going to head over to the contracts tab and I'm going to deploy a contract. Now for this project, we're going to deploy a token contract so we can find that token contract, which is an ERC 20 contract. And I'm going to hit deploy for the name. I'm going to name this rock, paper, scissors token. And for the symbol, we'll just say rock, paper, scissors, or RPS here. You can add a description and image. We're just going to leave everything else as is. Down here under network and chain, you can select your network or chain you want to deploy to with the drop down. We support any EVM compatible blockchain, so you can search the main net, test net, just search the name here. We're going to use Mumbai, so I'm going to select Mumbai here, and I'm going to hit the deploy now button. We'll get a transaction. That pops up here we just need to confirm it to deploy our contract then we'll get another one here a signature request we just need to sign it to add it on over to our dashboard and there you go we now have our token contract deployed now on the left hand navigation if we head on over to the token section here you'll see we don't have any token supply and this wallet owns zero but the main thing is we don't have any token supply so we need to create supply for our token here so I'm going to hit mint here and I'm going to mint 1 million of these tokens. I'll confirm that transaction to mint those. 
And once that's minted, you can see we have 1 million RPS tokens here. And currently my wallet that's connected owns all 1 million tokens. But what we're going to do is we're going to send these 1 million tokens on over to our backend wallet for our engine. And what our backend wallet is going to be able to do is when we call our request to engine, whenever a player wins rock, paper, scissors, we're going to supply our backend wallet with this RPS token so that the backend wallet can make and call all the transactions and send the tokens to who they need to be sent to. This way, that backend wallet, again, will handle all of these tokens and will distribute them as needed. So what I'm going to do here is go to my engine. And you can go to engine by clicking this engine tab right up here. I just opened up a new tab here and I'm going to connect it to my instance of engine. And now, if you don't already have an instance of engine, we'll drop a link down in the description below to some documentation along with a tutorial video on how you can set up engine locally. And once you have it set up and you connect it to your engine dashboard here, you'll be able to view and manage your instance of engine here. What I'm going to do here is copy my backend wallet that I'm going to be using. I'm going to come back over to my token contract here and I'm going to transfer tokens. I'm going to paste in the wallet address and I'm going to send over all 1 million of those tokens. So we'll hit transfer here. We'll confirm that transaction to transfer over the 1 million RPS tokens. And you can see here now the wallet connected owns zero RPS tokens. If we go to the explorer here, we can hit the read and we can go to the balance of function. We paste in our wallet address and hit run. You can see that we have the 1 million tokens within this wallet, which is our backend wallet. Now this is outputting in way here, which is why there is much more zeros behind here. Uh, but this is equivalent to the 1 million tokens. All right, so we have our token contract set up. We deployed it, we minted some tokens, we sent the tokens on over to our backend wallet for our engine. And that again, backend wallet, is going to be the one that we make our request to, to distribute the tokens to the necessary wallets. Now let's build out our application. So I'm gonna open up my terminal here. Right? And in my terminal, I'm gonna create a new third web project. I'm going to run npx third web create app. We're going to name our project. I'll just name this rock, paper, scissors app or RPS app. We're going to use Next.js and TypeScript for this application. Awesome. And once that's done, we'll change in to our app folder here. Oops, our uh, rock, paper, scissors app. And we're going to open this up in our code editor. OK, and in our project here, we're going to head into our pages folder and go to the underscore app .tsx file. And in here, we're going to oops. We're going to set up our application by first setting up our third web provider here. So the first thing in third web provider is our client ID, which is our third web API key. And this is being stored right now in a .env file. So if we open up our file directory, you'll see a .env.example here. And we're going to have to provide it with our third web API key. So coming on over to our third web dashboard, if you go to settings, I'm just going to open this up in a new tab. You can create an API key here. I already have one created, but you can just go ahead and create an API key if you want to learn a little bit more about it. Again, we'll drop in the description below links to the documentation along with a tutorial video that you can watch. So I'm going to copy this API key here, come back to our app, paste that in, and I'm going to rename this file here to just.env. There we go. And coming back to the underscore app.tsx, we set up our client ID. Next thing we need to do is set our active chain. Now this is being stored in a variable which is up here and the default is Ethereum, but we're going to switch it over to Mumbai because that is the network that I deployed my token contract to. You'll change this to whatever network or blockchain that you are working with. And that does it here for setting up our third web provider. Now I'm going to come on over to the in the pages folder, the index.tsx file. And in here, this is the templated code that you get with third web. I'm going to delete everything within this div that has the class of container. So I'm going to highlight everything in between here. Uh, delete that and just add a oops, uh, just add a connect wallet button here. And I'm going to open up my terminal and run yarn dev to take a look at our project here. So we'll open this up in localhost 3001. And I should have my 
connect wallet button right over here. And this will allow me to connect my wallet to my application. Next, I'm going to come on over. Let me just drop down this terminal here, open up my files under styles and this home module.css. I'm just going to paste in some of my own styles here. Uh, I just added in the container here, uh, display flex, um, flex direction, and justifying the content and items here so we can center our connect wallet button to the page. Along with down here, I added some um, styling for our button, which we're going to create for our rock, paper, scissors options and some styling for the results here that we're going to display the results of the game. And you can check this out. We'll add a link to this GitHub repo down in the description below. But I'm going to come back to our index.tsx file. I'm going to delete this image component import. We don't need that here. And we're going to set up a couple more things here in our file directory. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this constants and I'm going to create a new file in that called constants. Ts. Uh, if I can spell right, rename that constants.ts. And in here, we're going to export a constant called our token contract address. And we're going to get our token contract address here. And this way we can use these token contract address variable throughout our app. Coming back here, I'm going to come to our rock, paper, scissors token, copy our ERC20 contract address, come back here and paste that in. And I'm going to just close that because that is all we're going to need with that constants. All right. And then I'm going to create uh, in my file directory, I'm going to create a new folder called a utils. And in this utils, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call this game logic and uh, .ts. And this is going to be our game logic that we create for our rock, paper, scissors game. So in here, I'm going to create a type. We're going to call this uh, game choice. Uh, which is going to be rock, paper, or scissors. We're going to create a function here to uh, determine the winner. And what this function is going to take is our player's choice, which is going to be a game choice, which is also going to be a game choice. And in return, we're going to return ourselves a string of whether we won or not. So in here, we're going to check if player's choice equals computer's choice, then we return it to tie. And then if we have any other options, we'll just use a switch here. Uh, and depending on our player choice, in the case where we have rock, we will return here. The computer choice equals scissors. We'll say you win. If not, you lose. In the case where you choose paper, if the computer chooses rock, then we say you win. If not, you lose. And in the case where you choose scissors, if the computer selects paper, we'll say you win. If not, you lose. And then the default here, we'll just say uh, return invalid choice. And then down here, we're going to first export a, our type here which is game choice. And then we're going to export our determine winner function. And that is just going to be our simple game logic for our rock, paper, scissors game here. Next, we're going to come back to our file directory here. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this one components. And in that components folder, I'm going to create a file called choices.tsx. And in this choices.tsx, this is where we're going to create our buttons uh, for our rock, paper, scissors game. So I'm going to create a type of props here, which we are going to require the choice. So we're going to say on choice here, and we're going to create our choice component. And we're going to return our component here, which is going to be a div of different buttons. And we're just going to make sure that down here we export our choices component, right? So for our choices here, we're going to have three buttons. So I'm going to have one button here that says rock. We'll just copy this here two more times. Well, actually, let's say our button here, uh, we're going to give it a class name of styles. Let's import styles here really quick. Oops. Uh, was there a home module? CSS. So class name is going to be styles dot button here and our on click 
we're going to uh, set our choice here to rock. And we're going to do the same thing for our other buttons here. So let me just copy this. We're going to cop paste that two more times. Then we have paper and scissors. And our on choice would be paper and scissors. And that is just going to create our three buttons here that a user can choose, right? And that then we'll just come back on over to our index.tx file and we're going to add in our choices component here, uh, which we only want to show if a wallet is connected to our application. So once a wallet is connected, we can display the buttons and they can play the game. So to check if a wallet is connected, we can actually use the use address hook from third web. So we'll create a variable here. We'll store that value in an address variable and then we'll use the use address hook here from third web and this will get the wallet address or return to us the wallet address of the connected wallet if not it will return to us undefined and we can use that to see if there is a wallet connected or not so if there is an address then we can display our choices component so we'll come in here uh, we'll just say choices component and we're going to have to give our on choice here and we'll create a function that handles the player's choice. So first, let's come up here. Let's create that function. So we'll create our on choice, which is going to take our choice here. And we'll give this our on choice function. So if we come back to our app here, let's go back to 3001. We'll connect our wallet here. And there you go, you can see our wallet's connected and now we can see the three buttons for rock, paper, and scissors. So first we'll just create our game, our game functionality, make sure that rock, paper, scissors works. So every time we select one, we're gonna display the results down here. We'll just display a list and we'll only show the 10 most recent um, results. Then once we have coded out our game, we'll implement engine into it. And this is again, really showcasing how we can utilize engine. So we don't need to make every click over here on a button, an actual interaction with the blockchain. We can create our game like we normally would. We're just gonna add the web three functionality and the blockchain functionality on the back end side of this application. So you can translate this to like a web three game. You can build a regular game and utilize engine then to handle everything that's happening behind the scenes, whether it's claiming items, whether it's claiming tokens or coins, you don't have to show the transaction or create a function to execute the transaction upfront for the user. You can hide away these things that the user ex would normally experience when interacting with the blockchain and put it behind utilizing ThirdWeb's engine. So let's create the list here that we're going to display of our results. So we'll come down here and I'm gonna display the results over here in a list. Uh, but to get the, the results, uh, let's first create up here and interface for our results. We'll just say game results. And in our game result, we're going to just create an interface here with our player choice and our computer choice and our result, which is gonna be a string here. Then under my address and variable, I'm gonna create a state variable here for our game history. And we're going to use state here. Let me just import that. And this is just gonna keep an array of our game results here. And we'll start that off with uh, empty array first. Then we're going to create our uh, a variable here called game choices, which is going to be of type game choice, an array of it, which is going to be rock, paper, scissors. And then we're going to create our random choice for our computer here. So we're gonna get random choice create that function here which is going to get let's get a random number here so we'll just go random index uh, we're going to make this equal to math dot floor and then we'll get math dot random number here and then we'll multiply that by our game choice dot length and then we'll return back our game choices and whatever our random index is and that will give us a random choice here of a rock, paper, scissors. And then once we have our random choice, we can now create our on choice function here. 
And right here, we can come in here. We're going to create another variable here called a uh, computer choice. And this is going to return us our game choice here. And we can just run our get random choice function that we created right above. Then we're going to create a, another variable called winner, which we are going to de, uh, run our determine winner function that we created earlier. And we're going to provide it with our choice. Uh, which this is going to be of a game choice. And then we're going to provide it with our computer choice, which we just got up here by getting a random choice. Then we'll create a new game result, which will be of type game result. And we're going to provide it with our player choice, which is choice. We're going to provide it with our computer choice, and then we'll provide it with our winner. And we're going to name this here uh, player choice. And we'll give that to our choices here. And then we'll set our result here to the winner. And what are we? Um, does not exist. Oops. Uh, on our player choice. So uh, on the player choice. Oh, so up here in our interface, we're going to change player choice here to our game choice. Uh, same thing for our computer choice as well. And there you go, just had a little bit of a typo there. And then once we have our game result, we will set our game history here with the previous history. And we'll take that with our new game result and our previous history. And we will then uh, slice oops, this and then we'll do the last 10 results here. So again, that is going to be our on choice function here. And we're just going to to make sure that we have our on choice here, which we have. OK, we have it. OK, so we have it set to string again. So if we come back to our choices at TSX, we'll have to make this here a game choice. There we go. And yep. Yeah, and now our on choice function will work there. So below our choices, we're going to uh, actually above that, we will add a header three here. And we'll call uh, we'll have someone say select choice. And then below that, we'll create a, another header three here. And this one will say results. And below that, for our results, we'll create an unordered list here. Uh, we'll give this unordered list a class name of styles.results. And in this unordered list, we're going to create our list items. And we're going to map through our list or our game history, and we'll create our list item for each one. So in here, we're going to map through our game history array. We'll get our game and index. For each one, we'll create a list item. We'll give it a key of the index. And in each one of these, we're going to put in here um, just the player, what our player choice was, computer, what our computer choice was, and then the result. So if I save that and I come back to my game here, you can see we have select choice. We have our three buttons, rock, paper, scissors, and then we have our result down here. And if I hit uh, one of my choices here, you can see I chose rock, computer chose paper, and I lost. Same thing, we can just keep uh, selecting and you can see all the results and it only keeps a list of 10 and we can see the most recent 10 interactions here. So we have our game working. Now let's implement ThirdWords Engine on the back end so that it can handle and mint our user a token every time they win. So coming back to my code editor here, we're first going to create a our request here to engine. So I'm gonna open my files under pages. I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm gonna call this folder API. And I'm gonna create a new file within that. And I'm gonna call this one uh, claim token.ts. And in this claim token.ts, we are going to create our request here to engine. So I'm gonna create a handler here which we're going to use next API request. And I'll import both of those from next. And within our handler here, we're first going to check if our request method is not equal to post. We will then return a status 405 saying method not allowed and to please use post. 
Then in order to use engine, we're going to need a few variables. So we're going to create our variables here for our third web engine URL, our access token, and our backend wallet. We'll store those in our ENV file. So we'll create that in just a moment. Once we have that, we'll run a try catch. And in the catch, we're just gonna uh, give a response of status 500. Uh, we'll make error of type any here and we'll return our error message and we'll just export our default handler here. And next, what we're gonna do is create our request to engine. Now we need to add engine here. So we're going to open up our terminal and run yarn add at thirdweb-dev slash engine. Once we have that installed, we can come back and we're gonna set up our third web engine URL, access token, and backend wallet. So we're gonna add this in to our .env file. And in order to get your third web URL, if we come back to our engine dashboard here, your URL will be the URL that you have your instance of engine deployed to. If you're using localhost, uh, it'll just be your localhost that you have engine deployed to. Uh, we have our backend wallet, which is going to be the backend wallet that you deposited those tokens to. Uh, because again, we're going to utilize that backend wallet to distribute out the tokens to our users. And then under configurations here, you can create yourself or permissions, sorry, you can create yourself an access token and that's going to give you API access to your engine instance. So let's just come back to our app here, come back to our code editor. And there you go. You're just going to add in those variables. So third web engine URL your uh, access token and your backend wallet. So I'm just gonna add in my access token here and we'll go back to our claim token.ts. So back here in our claim token.ts, we now have all of the variables we need for engine here. So in our try here, we'll check to make sure that we have all of it. Uh, so if we don't have our variables for third web engine URL, access token or backend wallet, we'll throw an error saying that we're missing those variables. Then here, we're going to get one variable here from our request body, which is going to be the address, which is going to be the wallet address that we're sending the token to. And that's gonna be the wallet address of the connected wallet our user has. Next, we're gonna get our instance of engine here. So we're going to get engine. That's going to equal a new engine. And we can come up top here and we can import engine from the third web dash dev slash engine. And now engine requires a couple of things for us to set it up. First thing is going to be the URL, which is going to be our third web engine URL and the access token. So we can set that to the third web access token. Then once we have our engine set, we can get our response here, which we are going to await our engine. We're going to specify that we're going to use an ERC 20 and we're going to use the transfer function. And what our transfer function is going to do is tell our backend wallet, Hey, transfer a token to the specific wallet. So first thing we need to do here, you can see transfer is set to the chain. Uh, I'm just going to put Mumbai here because that is the chain our ERC 20 is deployed to then our contract address. So we can put our token contract address. Then the backend wallet, which is going to be our third one backend wallet. And then we need to provide it with our request body, which is going to have the two address, which is going to be the address that we get from our request body. And then finally, the quantity or the amount that we need to send. And for the amount, we're just going to put one and this needs to be a string here. So a string amount of one, and that is going to be our request there to engine. We're going to transfer using our backend wallet, the token from the token contract that we deployed to the address that is connected to our application. And we're just going to send one every time that they win. And then we can just respond with a status 200 of our response here. And that is going to be our request there to engine. Now we just need to come back to our index.tsx file and add this functionality to our on choice here. So now once we know if the result of our user is if they want or not, we can reward them a token. Now we're going to have to make this here an async function. And then below here, we're going to check if the uh, winner equals the result you win. Then we're going to uh, run a try catch here. 
the catch here, we'll just console log our error message. We'll make this of type any here. And in the try here, we're going to call our, we're going to make our request to mint or claim the token for the user. So we're going to create a response variable here. And we are going to then await and fetch our API slash claim token. And we're going to create our method here, which is going to be a post. We're going to have our headers here, set that to content type application JSON. We're then going to have our body here, which we are going to JSON.stringify and pass in our address variable, which is the wallet address of our connected wallet to this application. Then we'll get back our data here, which will await our response.json. And if a response is not okay, we'll throw a new error and then we'll just provide it our uh, data.message. And there you have it. Now, when a user selects their choice, if they want, we'll then call our request here to engine and it will transfer us a token. And then the last thing we're going to do is display the balance of the token for our user. So if we come back to our app right now, it doesn't show the balance of the token. And we're going to display that so we can see that, you know, we're actually earning tokens here for this wallet. So below everything here, we're just going to get our token contract first using the use contract hook from third web. And we'll provide it with our token contract address. Then we can get the token balance here using the use token balance hook from third web. And we provide it with our contract that we just got above and the address we want to check the balance for, which is our address variable here of our connected wallet. Then right over here above our select choice, we'll just create a header here with the balance and we'll get the token balance. And within that, there's a property here for display value, which will give us a string value of the token balance that the user has. So we'll save that, come back to our app. You can see our balance here is currently zero. And if we let's do our let's split our screen here and test this out. So right over here, I have my engine dashboard again opened on the left hand side here and we have our game here on the right. So we'll start playing uh, and you can see we won one, two, three. And you can see our three transactions are now queued up here in engine. They're being sent, they're gonna get mined. And then once that is all mined and transferred to our wallet here, we should see our wallet balance update. And there you go. You can see our balance just updated to three and we now have our game working all connected with engine in the back end doing all of the transferring of tokens and everything for us. So again, we can start playing this. And as we start to win, uh, we will get our tokens sent to us. So you can see here, all of those win are now queued up. They're getting sent over. And once they go through, you can see our balance here updates. We now have 13. So there you have it. We built our very own scalable Web3 application utilizing ThirdWeb's engine. And this, again, was just to showcase how you can utilize engine in combination with your applications, creating a very nice user experience on the front end while engine handles all of the blockchain transactions and complexities on the back end. If you want to learn more about engine, again, we'll drop links down to the documentation below. You can also check out more of our YouTube videos and tutorials where we utilize engine engine as well. But again, I hope you folks enjoyed this video. If you did, give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on more tutorial videos just like this. Down in the description below, we'll also add a link to our support team. You can open up a support ticket and they'll be happy to answer any of your questions or help you out. But again, I hope you folks enjoyed this video and until next time, see ya.